Hey guys, this is Elsa Spirit of Winter. It is the most expensive single card out of Disney Locana. At one point in time, it was easily a $1,200, $1,300 card. In fact, the price I got my Elsa at, I couldn't pull it for the life of me, was a thousand bones. So Elsa is now near mint for $700. And people are dumping Elsa. Actually, these two screenshots were about five minutes apart. You can see the Lowe's listing on this screenshot was 800. The Lowe's listing on the previous screenshot was 700. So Elsa is continuously dropping in price. Now, a lot of card games is not just Disney Locana. It's also One Piece. One Piece is absolutely being hammered right now. And the other MetaZoo, which is in bankruptcy, we've covered that in great detail. I don't think you can get any lower than MetaZoo, Meta where you're fighting for bankruptcy. So we have a, a very weird situation here where this idea of investing in cardboard has basically petered out. The only real true investment in cardboard has been Pokemon, sealed product. Pokemon has done really well, but vintage Pokemon has not done very well. So not every category of Pokemon is up. Now Magic the Gathering reserve list has done really well, but boxes have done incredibly poorly. The boxes of uh, Magic the Gathering, they seem to go down every single day. And we have Amazon Prime Day. Maybe that's why, right? Because we're prepping for Amazon Prime Day soon. And we know what boxes will be on sale pretty much. We know they're going to be around 80 ish dollars and maybe $90 as they dump the rest of their remaining older inventory. And there's no reason to invest in these boxes because two years from now, they'll just be on Amazon Prime for lower than distribution prices. So let's talk about a little bit about uh, Locana, MetaZoo, like these other card games, like the big free are still the big free. They're, I think long term, they're still going to be okay. It's not going to be as good as it used to be. Investing in cards is stupid. I will say that as somebody who has invested in cards. I was being stupid. Uh, the S&P 500 is at record highs. It hits record highs almost every other day now. The, you know, the stocks like Nvidia, like even Bitcoin is doing relatively well. So you're going to put your money in numerous items and been way better off than putting your money in any of these newer card games. And part of this really comes down to how collectible, how reprintable are these cards. One Piece, they had a reprint, and now I notice that they have separated reprint. Even the cards in the boxes are exactly the same. They're now saying that one box has like a blue bottom, and the other one has a white bottom. And if your box has a blue bottom, it means it's worth like five times as much as a box with a white bottom. So they're desperate, but there's no like sales for this, right? There's if the cards and the booster pop box are the same and you're actually just looking to play with the cards, then why does it matter to you what the color of the bottom of your box is? It shouldn't matter, right? There's no like first edition, uh, one piece. Uh, Disney at Locana is just taking a nosedive and I think rightfully so. I mean, as they print more and more copies of these cards, things get cheaper and cheaper and that, that's probably why these are not investable. Yeah, so this listing is for the print or the blue bottom. But uh, my understanding of this is very simple, is that even though there is a blue bottom, the cards in it are identical to the cards in the one that is the white bottom. So this is a very interesting and desperate attempt for investors to try to differentiate. So this is the white bottom, wave two, white. The listing is for the reprinted, uh, Romance Dawn print wave and features a white bottom of the box, which, what's different? Once you open the box, is it really the color of the bottom? Because there's, it's not like one is first edition and one is not. And you look at the price of this, I don't think this has even received a reprint. Investing in cards is very dangerous and very stupid. And again, explaining exactly why it's so dangerous. The reprints can always happen. The reprints are always happening and there's nothing to stop them from happening over and over 
and over again. I think in terms of longevity, in terms of how interesting it is as an investment. Yeah, these things are just going to be reprinted. It's Bandai, for God's sake. And then it's Disney Raving. You don't know what their reprint policies are because you don't haven't seen them until now. So to call it an investment is really, you know, it's really pushing it too much, in my personal opinion. It's not something where I would say a lot of people are investing in cards. And by the time like other people, by the time your neighbor starts investing in cards, it's already too late. Too many people already know about when too many people start investing in the same thing and start pumping it, you are in a lot of trouble. So when, for instance, um, CNN is going to talk about a new hot stock, you know, everyone and their grandmother's already bought into the stock and there are people looking to dump the stock. MetaZoo is a very clear example of like what actually the bottom looks like as MetaZoo itself is really just, you know, it's in bankruptcy court right now. Who knows what will happen to it? Will somebody buy it? Will someone not buy it? Who knows? A card game is only as good as the player base and the player base is only there to make money. You're going to be in a lot of trouble later on when there's no money to be made and there's no player base. I think MetaZoo is a very clear warning sign to other games. I'm not saying One Piece, Sorcery, I'm Fabled, Fabled, uh, not Fabled, um, what, well, Flesh and Blood. I'm not saying these games cannot continue on. They will. But the risk is MetaZoo. And that is a risk that is right in your face right now due to its bankruptcy. You know, card games in general, you know, we're buying Weiss and we're seeing collections come up that we would never have imagined in four or five years right now. So these other card games that are not Magic, that are not Pokemon, that are not Yu-Gi-Oh, they're suffering because as we enter a recession, I fully expect we're, we're going to go to a recession soon. Stocks get higher, your property tax gets more, you're going to, there's less good jobs out there. All the good jobs have been kind of replaced by AI or some variant of AI plus a human being. So it's kind of like the self-checkout. Walmart doesn't need, you know, six people to register, to do six different checkouts. They just have one person who makes sure that you're not stealing when you self-checkout for your six different checkouts. I think we're going to see that trend uh, come. I, I bet you one huge change will be truck drivers get paid $100,000 plus a year. What if like they had AI self-driving truck drivers? Then then a lot of people would lose a lot of money very fast or Uber drivers or something like that. You can kind of see their writing is on the wall. So I do feel like money is becoming tighter and people are just simply not buying as many card games because it's really expensive to play all these card games. It's not a good portfolio, right? So if you look at this in a mutual fund, you compare it to S&P 500, the S&P 500 is record breaking every single day almost. And then this one is not. Anyway, my guys.